Fundamentally, we think the most important advance in medical information technology is allowing patients to become active participants in their care, letting them help make decisions about their care, then letting them work towards uh, following up on those decisions and following the results, tracking them, self-reflecting, improving their performance, and then staying linked with the doctors so that going forward, they can see how these improvements have made changes in their health and then lead into to further changes in, in the way we care for them. Sure, there's a, there's a combination of tools that we're using, some of those in the doctor's office and some of those in the patient home. Uh, one example is a device called a Chumbi. It's a commercially available device that we use but create our own software on it. Uh, an example here is a tool that we've created for medication adherence. There's a visualization of a clock that allows the patient to see when their medications are due and whether or not they've yeah, taken those them. Little dots mean that at that time of the day the person has to take something. Right. Yeah. And it's built around this idea of not an alarm system that's focused on a very particular time, but instead an awareness system that gives the patient an idea of a window in which time it's appropriate for take their medications so that they can say, well, I have a meeting coming up, I'll take my medication a little ahead of time or a little later, rather than treating it like something that happens exactly at a specific point in time. And it's something that patients uh, typically favor, that flexibility. They can click on a medication and see in more detail when it's due and what the medication looks like and they can report. But more importantly, they can see over the course of a week how they've been performing so they can be reflective and say, well, I need to get more on top of this. Uh, this is just a, a fake patient that we've created and this patient hasn't been taking their medication very well for the past couple of days. And you can see that the HIV viruses, the pink cells on the screen, are attacking the T cells, the gray cells, which are part of the immune system. So it's taking the information about their adherence, combining it with their lab tests that they've had from the lab, and giving them a, a picture, essentially, of a drop of their blood, giving them a, the best of our medical knowledge and idea of what's going on, and making it so they have some action that they can take to change that. So within a couple of hours of taking their medication, they'd see all these T cells completely protected by a ring of medication. Yeah, the hope is that this type of technology is, is designed to scale for whatever type of environment uh, or whatever economic situation is involved but because of the fact that you can have doctors caring for patients remotely and asynchronously, it can dramatically decrease the overall cost of care. Sure. So when I was a physician, uh, a resident, I was very frustrated by the fact that most offices have computers facing the wall. So that means that the doctor's back is facing the patient. You're pounding away on a keyboard and not really working together. And in fact, it's actually making it more and more difficult to care for the patient. So our design is all about uh, transparency. Show all of the data and all of the decision-making processes and and our our decision support tools that we have in medicine and make them available to the patient as well. So here's a simple interface where we can open a patient record and then we can see a dashboard of this patient's entire medical history. So this patient, for example, has diabetes and high cholesterol and high blood pressure. And we have this dashboard that's always there available that the patient can view at home and they actually control the, that data and control whether their family members can see it or friends or this doctor. And we can open up pieces of that information in more detailed views. Uh, we're able to collaborate with the patient. So here's a very simple example. This uh, patient is on three medications, one for diabetes, one for cholesterol, and one for hypertension. And looking at the whole picture with the patient and letting them say, for example, Doc, I can't take all three of these medications in the morning because it gives me a stomach ache and I'm, I end up not taking them. Is it possible for me to split these up and make the interface very intuitive so the patient can just put their hands on the screen and show where they might like to take them? And the doctor can push back and say, well, maybe that medication is not appropriate to take in the evening, but this medication for your cholesterol is actually more effective if you take it before bed, so that'll solve two problems at once. And it creates this little visualization of the clock, 
that's automatically synchronized with the device that the with patient the, uses. With the Chumbi device, or whatever exactly. it's called, yeah. And, and um, this is the way, where I'm standing now, uh, this is what, what I would see as a patient sitting yes. with you. Exactly. And so we would both work on looking at the medications, looking at the schedules and all of that. And the hope is we're designing it to eventually be smaller and less intimidating and the goal is actually for it to be very easy to push it out of the way in the office. In the end what we want are the humans interacting and making decisions together. The technology being there supportive when we need it but really easy to get out of our way when we don't because we want to be talking or, or you know, forming bonds with patients and not forming bonds with this technology.